Now, Nation, if you remember, a couple of months ago, I took a sidetrack to the blues with Joe Bonamassa's latest release entitled Dust Bowl. Well, Joe Bonamassa is also the part of a supergroup. They kind of play the blues. More rock-oriented blues. But they just released a new record. That's Black Country Communion with their record aptly entitled Two. It's their second album, so they called it Two. Hmm. But anyways, he's in this band along with a couple of other members, Glenn Hughes, Jason Bonham, and Derek Sheridan of Dream Theater fame. No, not all three of them, just Derek. The other two names should ring a bell for you as well, but I'll let you research those two if you really want to know. But anyways, last year, in fact only about nine months ago, the first Black Country Communion album was released. In fact, it was right around summertime of last year, and to be perfectly blunt, it wasn't bad. In fact, it was a nice throwback to the 1970s. Basically, Black Country Communion 2 straight from the band themselves, is supposed to sound kind of like, well, if the first one sounded like 1972, two sounds like 1973, only with much better equipment. And it's pretty apparent. In fact, both albums really sound like it's just an updated version of good old-fashioned 1970s hard rock. And two definitely qualifies and is capable of delivering sounds of equal mass. This 11-track affair is over 60 minutes in length, which is something that you wouldn't often see in the 1970s because of the formatting. However, if they had the capabilities back then where it wouldn't be double, triple, quadruple LPs, well, they would have done it. But 64 minutes in life for 11 tracks is commonplace for us anymore. And these guys, well, they definitely are not shy about showing off their instrumental uh, prowess. Whenever you have Joe Bonamassa on guitar, sometimes you just have to sit back and marvel at the way in which he's able to play. Whenever you have Derek Sheridan on keyboards, it's kind of hard not to let him have a nice solo because he's just so talented. Whenever you have a guy such as Jason Bonham, I mean the name alone should just tell you why you should show him, you know, he sh you should let him show his prowess on the skins and with percussion. And then Glenn Hughes on bass and also providing vocals, except on two tracks. Hey, can't complain whatsoever. In fact, this is one of those albums that you just want to pop on. You just want to sit down with a beer, maybe watching, you know, TV on mute on the background. Either that or just Watching something outside, you know, just sort of plopping yourself in a chair and just admiring the life around you. This is a perfect album for that. In fact, it's perfect just about anything. I was watching a baseball game while I was listening to this record earlier, and it worked out just fine. The mute was great. I still understood everything that was going on in the game, and I still understood everything that was going on with the music. The music flows very well, and it's something that... The blues orientation being infused with the hard rock that you traditionally saw around this era, it was something that was very commonplace back then, but nowadays it requires a little bit more seeking to find. And that's why bands such as Black Country Communion are really embraced a lot by a little bit of an elder generation. However, it's something that's starting to get infused a little bit more into today's culture with some of the other bands that have been coming out. Black Country Communions 2 really shines forth in the fact that it's very balanced. It seems that in the nine months ever since the release of their first record, they've really fine-tuned the songwriting a little bit more. While the first effort was damn good, at some points it seemed like it was a little bit rushed in some ways. Almost like they were really starting to get the hang of playing together as uh, musicians, but they wanted to get out and crank out something just really quickly. Either that or this was just an experiment that they wanted to, you know, see if it stuck. Well, it stuck very well. In fact, the album did extremely well. It was number 50 on the top 200, which, for a band that was a debut that, personally, I didn't hear of whenever it first came out, it's pretty damn good. With 2, it seemed like they went into the studio with a vision. They went into the studio with a redefined vigor, and their songwriting, as they played more and more often together, just became even more tight. They were able to write some really anthemic album, or uh, some anthemic songs in this particular album, as well as some very soft uh, very mellow, mellow moments on this record as well. And the one good thing that I love about this is that whenever Bonamassa goes off, he doesn't hold back. In fact, none of these guys hold back. There are moments on this album where you just take a look at uh, Joe Bonamassa or listen to Joe Bonamassa and think to yourself, you know, if Joe Bonamassa walked up to me yesterday, uh, tomorrow and said that he wanted my firstborn child, I'd fucking do it. That guy's a fucking beast. 
kind of the feeling that you get on this record. You have four impressive uh, instrumentalists that are able to really do their job very, very well. And whenever you put the four together into a super group, the result is almost always going to be something that's very recognizable and something that you're going to feel really strong about whenever you listen to it. This is something where if they continue this project on, it's always going to probably get rave reviews unless they really try to explore the dynamacy and really get intricate with their sound and kind of overthink it. With the way that they're doing things right now, they're definitely not overthinking it. Instead, they're just going into the studio, hitting, uh, you know, kind of hitting off and bouncing off of what one another is able to accomplish, and they're writing very catchy and very good songs that really have a lot of power behind them. So, if they continue to do that, this is honestly a collaboration that will be fantastic for many, many years to come. And I don't really see them changing too much, because this is a style of music that the four of them not only play well, but they also love. Bonamassa has been a mainstay in the blues department for now a decade. I don't see him changing now. Overall, this album definitely has a feel of just being better than the first, and the direction that these guys seem to be taking into the future is just kind of spellbinding. It's something where you almost want to know where they're going to go next, and not have to wait for another year or however long it's going to take for what I'm going to guess is going to be Black Country Communion 3 to come out. This is something where you almost want to fast forward through time and see if this band really takes off and really becomes a mainstay and kind of starts this revival of this 70s style hard rock fused in with the blues and with maybe a little bit of jazz. I mean, we see jazz fusion in metal all the time and blues is something that you still will see moderately in the rock scene. However, as I had mentioned previously, it's a little bit more subtle, but maybe this is something where it can become more of a part of that. Because, let's face it, some of the bare bones roots of music was established within the 1970s with some of the albums that we're talking about here. Some of the music that was produced back then. Not to mention it was a big prog generation, so instrumentalization was key. You never know. All musings aside, this is a fantastic record. One that I would have to definitely give a strong 7.75 out of 10. Definitely something that I would recommend to you guys if you want something new. And if you want to really marvel, if you, especially if you're a metal guy, if you want to marvel at the way a guy can wail on a guitar, anything Joe Bonamassa does is pretty much going to satisfy you. So definitely check out Black Country Communion 2, and let me know what you think about it. For those of you who didn't check out my review of Dust Bowl by Joe Bonamassa, check that out, and check that album out as well. Because baby cover killer nation's got the blues, and the blues have never felt this good.